keep searching for the answers, keep watching uh, videos like Soko Films, and the biggest thing is don't be afraid. You know, like, don't be afraid of your family. Don't let anybody stand in the way of your salvation. Like, I was trying to find the answers in Islam, but I found them in Christ. Yeah, that's where they were all along. They were never... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. And, um, they weren't over there. Exactly. Jesus loves you. Hello everybody again. Um, so this is post speakers corner. We've uh, like been forced into uh, having a gin and tonic to be able to sit in the pub. And I have with me here is Chris, Christopher, and this is Zamil or Zamil or some pronunciation that is the correct one. We'll find out in a minute. And they're both over from Canada. And I was really uh, edified actually to, to, to think that uh, regardless of what, what the Dawah would have us believe, like not only in the park but outside of the park, Christianity is effective and our videos are able to like uh, assist or you know like embolden people to, to preach the word. Amen. So I'm gonna go ladies first and we're just gonna like find out stuff, I guess. Right, so um, how long have you like what, what's your experience of Speakers Corner today? How did you find it? Was it like, yeah, how was it for you? Today was pretty crazy, I would say, like a circus almost. An asylum is the one I, asylum, <laughs> I like yeah, to okay. do. And uh, Chris, were you kind of more prepped for the madness, or does it look very sanitized on the camera? Or no, I expected the madness for sure. Okay, and you definitely got it. expected yeah. the madness. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, what's your background um, in terms of like Christianity and uh, like where, like whereabouts in Canada you from? Do they have like a you know, it, it, does it marry up with kind of like the Christianity that you see in the park? So I would say I'm, a, yeah, I would say I'm a non-denominational Christian. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So um, we don't have any type of like, we don't have a park over there like you guys have over here, but um, we have a variety of many different denominations in Canada. So, but for me specifically, I would consider my me and my church is more of like a non-denominational church right okay so i was recently i got a few friends actually in canada so i was recently discussing um like just travel plans and stuff and, and they were saying oh i'd love to be in london for speaker's corner and i would love yeah. to go and see david lynn and maybe dory love if he was there or or yeah. sandra solomon or any of the videos that i've seen in toronto yeah. so do you um, even though you don't have a park necessarily, yeah. do you utilize those uh, ways of reaching the godless and the lost? Yeah, for sure. There's a there's a place uh, called Dundas Square, where it's probably the most highest traffic when it comes to people walking downtown. Like the West End kind of the, thing. Yeah, the yeah. West End. A lot of people go by there. So many attractions over there, and it's a it's like a landmark, the Dundas Square. You would say, yeah. And um, I would say, and I'm from London. Yeah, 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 I know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I would say that that's why a lot of people go to preach or do dawah or do do any type of uh, uh, showcase your talents. I guess that's what that's where people would go for. Yeah, so people go there and they, they use that area as an evangelism hub area to evangelize the people to have. No, it's not so much like a collective um, um, agreement yeah. for everyone because comes there and like debate, but it's more like people just know to go there because. People show up, showcase their talents, or you see some people giving out tracks for like da the people do their da with like tracks yeah. or whatever. Yeah, Hebrew Israelites sometimes yeah. come by there. Yeah. yeah, but it's not like set in stone that like, we're gonna be there. Like you guys have down here, we're gonna be there mm -hmm. every Sunday. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys almost have a culture down here. Like I've heard it was yeah, like 50 years or something like that. Oh, it's more, more like 250. 200 years. At so just over, I mean, from where we are, just across from the entrance to Speaker's Corner, there is uh, the site of the Tyburn tree, which was a hangman's noose. And there were many Catholics martyred there and, and just like, oh, wow. you know, criminals uh, also. Um, and I think the tradition kind of sprang up from like the final words or going to maybe protest. Like lots of protests end up back at Speaker's Corner. They maybe start at like, you know, the government offices. So that's the kind of history of it. It was, oh, yeah, it, was, it, it, it wasn't always religious at all because we were a utterly Christian country, even though like Catholics were getting martyred and Protestants were getting thrown, you know, like we had a few squabbles. And then, um, yeah, then it became more, like it was mainly politics, I guess. And uh, You stuff should be that a tour guide for Christians who come here looking for speakers. Point, I'm telling definitely, you. <laughs> definitely. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, no worries, yeah. I'm coming with my info. Yeah, yeah. Right, so Zamil, um, 
what I, I, I already know your both your backgrounds, but I'd like just for um, our family, like what's your history with Christianity, like in a nutshell, and then I'll kind of like dig a bit deeper until you poke me. <laughs> My history with Christianity. I was born a Muslim and lived most of my life as a cultural Muslim. Probably until about two years ago, I started uh, diving deeper into understanding Islam and going past like just the Arabic and trying to understand English. Uh, during that process is when I started studying like Judaism and Christianity. And then I think it was a year and a half ago I came to Christ or I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Sorry, I'm just standing here with John <laughs> says one does. Yeah, well so done. It was like I was trying to find the answers in Islam, but I found them in Christ. Yeah, that's basically. where they were all along. They were never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. And, um, they weren't over there. <laughs> exactly. Right, I'm coming back. And, and your, what's your background with uh, Jesus? So I would say I grew up in the church from seven years old. Um, like many Christians who grow up in the church, we kind of steer away. For me specifically, I steered away early in my teens and uh, found myself coming back like we mo majority do. I found myself coming back for a circle. Um, I will always remember in church as well, they would always quote a verse. I don't know exactly the verse, but if you if you plant a seed somewhere along the lines, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, that one's always been quoted as well. Yeah. But oh, if you grow if you if you grow your kids in the foundation of the Lord, they would never part. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. I don't know. I don't remember the exact. It's verse like Canadian translation. It's uh, all good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a testament to my life. That verse right there. Right. That's what, so. Everything that we learned didn't go from one ear and out the other. It just stayed there, simmered. Eventually, I yeah. found myself circling back through. Um, through questioning my faith, through having friends that would ask me questions, Muslim friends that would ask me questions, or uh, um, atheist friends who would ask me questions, and I would, for me, my tool was to go in, to go to the internet, because that's that's the new age, right? We go into the internet, where all the information is available through us through social media, internet. Yeah. So I, I would look for these questions, I would, and I would. God di guided me to certain channels, certain certain platforms, Soko Films being one of them. I've Many heard of them. Will, yeah. yeah, they're pretty good. I heard I they're pretty good, yeah. Well, they're amazing, actually. Yeah, they're amazing. But I didn't so. want to blow my own trumpet. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was able to find certain questions, uh, certain answers to certain questions that were that I really was dwelling on, right? And I was able to kind of reinforce my faith, right? Because I always had the faith. I knew it wasn't. I knew it wasn't. Uh, um, wrong i knew my faith was the right faith it just helped me reinforce my faith right so um yeah so going through let's we'll say in my later 20s i've just naturally i guess because of the pandemic and everything and then having a family and and finding these answers just reinforced my faith like god never comes too early he never comes too late he comes like right on time exactly. knocking and on the door yeah exactly where exactly you are. so 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 through god's you know grace and um, amazing timing I'm back full circle, you know, I'm back and here to stay, yeah? I was about to say, like, just pump the brakes there and just stay where you yeah, are yeah. now. So, so, like, what I'm hearing a lot of, like, um, like the ability to have questions answered, which we know is, like, un-Islamic because you're not to ask. I mean, Allah is all-knowing unless you ask questions, I guess. Um, so, and, and Christ is the Logos and, like, knowledge of God becomes wisdom, which is the Holy Spirit and, that you know, all of that good stuff. So... I mean, I guess, like, I'm not asking you at all, do you regret any, like, there's a redundant question, but what I mean to say is, did, so on your process of, like, abandoning Islam and, like, adopting Christianity, what were the biggest uh, stumbling blocks, like, in terms of maybe friends, family, like, a sense of guilt or fear, or was there any of that for you? Like, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't say any guilt. Hesitation in the beginning, yes, right, because I lived a certain way for so long, not just in Islam, but in sin as well, without knowing Christ. So to uh, accept just the thought of Jesus being God to me was really like almost scary mm. to accept feeling like, because the Quran says like really uh. harsh things about yeah, committing we've all shirt. heard it on yeah. the channel <laughs> yeah. so i would say like i would i knew the truth but it was so hard for me to accept it being real yeah. and then knowing that i would have to 
potentially sacrifice certain familial relations, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. How are your family with your decision, like now, as opposed to like right there and then? But by the grace of God, my family is still talking to me. We're in good relations, you know. I would say we're in good relations. That it's all still in the air. Mm -hmm. I guess, like through my process of learning and through me leaving Islam, my family has started to look into their own faith, Ooh, let's and get therefore, now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah, give me your mom's number. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> like, who is this? <laughs> yeah. But so because of this, we weren't like devout to knowing every hadith and every verse of the Quran, but now they are looking into those things to find out what it is that has to be done with me basically oh my gosh that sounds yeah well I, I mean what i'd say is like romans 8 28 um they're looking into it they may have motives that are less than oh, i want to be a christian as well yeah. but by having to study the bible to try to refute your position maybe like god will bring goodness out of that he brings goodness out of a void out of, out of evil out of anything so please got like if our viewers could just like chuck up a couple of prayers uh, for Zamil's family that would like Amen. that'd be brilliant um, so like how do you, I mean you're I'm going to say young because I'm sitting next to you so like what's the like the not the youth church that's ridiculous but I mean like um, how do you find like the people you grew up with other than like maybe Muslims or other religion like do you find that there's a strong uh, presence within like your area of Toronto do you think that Christ like people are proud or are, like emboldened or is it more kind of maybe a little bit embarrassed or I don't know like yeah you know? I would say for our church the the youngsters they're amazing they're it's amazing to see them go out of their way to do um, evangelize on the on the day they basically evangelize every day every day they have a, a certain group that goes out and they try to fill every single day, right? And the majority of the time, it's you're seeing the the, the, the young people, younger than me, I'm talking seventeen year olds, no, I saw eighteen it, like year olds, a basic, yeah. like yeah. fetus. Yes, yeah, so and they yeah, make like, it yeah. like yeah, they make it a priority in their lives. It's just mm -hmm. beautiful to see. But they're with, they're dedicated, you know. They're that's the first time I've seen that with the youth in 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 my area, right, in Toronto. For the major spread out, spread out. I wouldn't say so much. Mm. I wouldn't say so if, if that's the case for. The um, other Christians that I've I've grown up with, people who are considered family friends. You know, I, I don't see that in them. I see, I see more materialistic. Uh, um, I see that's the, that's the priority in their life. Something materialistic, whether if it's career, whether if it's uh, um, family, whether if it's, it's money, it's money, it's yeah, okay. whether if it's uh, um, anything, Sex, sports, drugs, rock and roll, sounds sports, a bit rock and roll, yeah. what what rock have you? Anything that's like basically not. You know they're they're a god basically. Yeah. You know, so that's what I would say. So I don't see that. I don't see that 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 pride. I don't see that pride because. And do even you, like, I guess my question is like we were talking before about, um, like trying to be like being emboldened and having role models, whether they're preachers or boxers yeah. or whoever they are, that they're unashamed of the gospel, that they're not in back. Because I had that yeah. when I first uh, watched Soko. Like I already knew Bob. But I, uh, I'd yet to like uh, meet JC, and I found it like really refreshing that there was people who weren't embarrassed Amen, yeah. to just talk about Jesus. Like they weren't kind of like that sort of thing. Or yeah, what I see, you know. what I see, it's almost like a, a irritate. They're not people. Most majority of the Christians that I grew up with are not willing to engage in uh, theological discussions, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe within each other, but I could even see some sort of, of irritation or, or, or being uncomfortable for whatever reason. Maybe because these are questions that they never faced themselves or they yeah. have, but they shied away from. Mm -hmm. They never really took a deep dive into it. Maybe because for some reason, they don't, maybe don't even believe what they they've been grown up to uh, uh, what they've grown up to, to I to think be taught, that's you know I think I mean? that's the blessing of uh, like defend the hope that is within you Amen. if you don't try to defend it you may never realize that you don't believe that thing Amen. like you have to bring the verse and test it like you have to try and give your exegete or like your take on it and then another Christian can say well actually like I think and then you'll come to because otherwise whatever your mum believes maybe or your grandmother or you'll just like buy it until you test it like until you're forced to in, like you know that's the the good thing about polemics and apologetics more importantly yeah, Peter says to have the uh, answer for the faith that's within you be yes. prepared to have a faith answer for the uh, the, faith that the hope that it depends which translation exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so 
Yeah, I love a bit of Bible. Right, so how are you getting on with your, um, like, because I, something I think I've witnessed, which is a bit, like, I don't know, I'm going to say it because it's me talking, but, yeah, I've seen a, a vibe that if people, for example, at the corner accept Islam, it's just like they're in, they're, they're in and they're, like, part of and, you know, maybe getting their bed sheets ready to wear them and, I don't know, getting a Quran. But when people come to Christ, like it's odd because there's a care and a, a love for them, but at the same time there's a vague little Spanish inquisition of like, well, what do you believe about this and, and the hypostatic union and do you think it's Trinitarian? And like, and I'm like, chill out, they've only just come in the door. Like they don't, how do they even know what that means? So did you find like a lot of support or did you find like a, I don't know, like what was your experience of, of the church, not necessarily the building, but the, the body of Christ, like when you got in? I didn't really have many negative experiences in terms of denominational or like doctrine yeah, yeah. argument. Experience, oh yeah, like nobody really asked me. <laughs> <laughs> they just said, oh Jesus God, come on in. Yeah. So that's, that's like, I, didn't, I can't think of an example. I didn't really know many Christians anyway, so through my friends, I probably knew one Christian person. And they didn't ask me anything about my denominational beliefs. Yeah, no, I don't even mean yeah. denominational. Yeah, we just like, get this, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, this trial by fire of, like, to just double check. Like, oh, I don't, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm not a fan of it. Like, I'd rather question why you're not a Christian, like, as opposed to why you are. Like, yeah, it, yeah and what you think. No. It's, yeah, God, I, yeah, like Chris said, God just, like comes wherever you are is the right time yeah, exactly. and then you learn afterwards that's the whole point you work out your salvation with fear and trembling like yeah because it's a process to be worked out it's not like you get the manual and you're just like exactly you know yeah like that's a theologian true. that's so, true yeah. Come with theologian. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it was just probably more exciting for everybody that i was just a christian period because i was a muslim before so there was no really room for just yeah. like prove it, you know. Yeah, yeah, Satan doesn't like letting them go. I know that much. Yeah. Anybody, like, there's always. I don't know for everybody, but I had like a kickback of, like, I felt oppressively. I don't know, like, until I just came out the other side of it. Um, like, I'm. Yeah. Is there anything you wanted? To, like, what brings you to um, Blighty? That means England in English. <laughs> what brings me to England? Yeah. Oh, to be family. But when when I found out we were going there, I automatically was thinking like, okay, I gotta go speaker's corner and go meet and at least go go show my gratitude to the to the people who are part of the platform that help help reinforce my faith so much right there's people like, like you yourself Cade and, and Bob and, and JC and everyone that's a part of the, the so-called family right I just wanted to, to show my gratitude you know meet uh, meet meet you guys right and show that your 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 work is um is is valid and it's and, and it's helping a lot of people. I don't know if you guys know that, but that's what I want to let you guys know. When you're... Oh shucks! Yeah, but reason. that is, I often pray that. Like I know that um even when I was only ever filmed by the Dawa, like for the first twenty three minutes until J C got there in the old days. Like I always, I knew that just as long as I can be seen in Pakistan or Iran or wherever it is in Essex or like I don't know Scotland. It, there's someone who's going to hear something, but I just don't know who that... And I don't know if they're going to hear something that's going to come to, like, the Holy Spirit will bring it to fruition in five years, but you just have to, like, plant a little seed of doubt, as it were, or a mustard mustard grain of, of faith, and then... Yeah. So, um, I guess, like, I, I, I wondered, and I know JC wonders as well, um, what would be your advice? Like, so we know there are sincere Muslims, other than the ones in the comments section with the hilarious, uh, like, capital letter nonsense. So there's genuine, like, people with integrity who still would, would just like, I guess, to see what's on the other side before, you know, like maybe putting a toe in the water. So, what, what would be? Do you have any advice for those those Muslims who are questioning? Sure. Yeah. Keep searching for the answers. Keep watching uh, videos like Soko Films, and the biggest thing is don't be afraid. You know, like, don't be afraid of your family. Don't let anybody stand in the way of your salvation. Amen. Especially not fear, because the Bible says to be anxious for nothing, right? So, I believe that... I love that book. I love it. <laughs> it's a really good one. You should try reading it, too. Well, bestseller. <laughs> bestseller. Yeah. Um, keep reading English translations. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't translate Arabic into English. 
because that doesn't make any sense. Yes, you can. And don't let anybody tell you that their word is greater and more correct than the Islamic scholars because what is their level of education? And make sure you question everything. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> any, any more? Like, and anything. approach your family with love and approach your friends with love. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, I guess, is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to accept the truth because Jesus is Lord. Boom. That's what I like. Chris, I, I'm just going to say the Bible before JC jumps in. The Bible is, like it says, do not fear. Like I think one, I think it's 365 times. I maybe like it's around that. It's like one for every day, basically. So fear, fear of the Lord is wisdom. But for everything else, like... We've got you, as it were, like the the body or, or God has got you. So, uh, like, I'm going to give you kind of the last word and then I'm really going to give Samil the last word, but I'm just, like, trying to make you feel good, but, like, women He's over here. Yes, word. exactly. <laughs> so, um, like, I don't know, like, do you have any... Um, I mean, I think you've been, like, helpful to Samil, obviously, in her, like, journey in her newfound faith. So, like, maybe... I mean, she's very helpfully given some advice for, like, Muslims who are questioning, but... Maybe for some Christians, if they have Muslim friends, like, do you have any advice on, like, how best to approach them? Or, like, you know, do you have any feelings about that? And any final thoughts? Yes. For specifically how to approach Muslims as your friends, or maybe if it's your family. If they've approached you, maybe. If they've okay. approached you, yes. I would say approach them with definitely with love, but be 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 straightforward at the same time try to try to try to try to not try to be gentle but approach approach the approach the the situation with love you know and you don't be afraid to speak the truth you know don't be afraid to speak the truth we all if, even if even if Jesus doesn't return in our lifetime right which i believe he will but if he, even if he doesn't we still have to face we still have to face death none of us are immortal right so Keep that into consideration. Don't don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for tomorrow. So if you love this, if you consider this person your friend, family, whatever, even a colleague that you care about, then it's, it's, it's it should make it your priority to to present the gospel to them, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah, that's brilliant. I just throw it out like the amount of, I think you know, at least one hundred and fifty thousand, notwithstanding COVID, like one hundred and fifty thousand people die every day. And very few of them wake up that day going, all right, this is my last day. I better like just fix up with Jesus. Like that, it just comes like a thief in the night as it were. So <laughs> I heard a rumor that there's um, like a rap you can do in Arabic, like some kind of a beatboxing of, um, I think, Surah al fatiha that proves that you were once in the gang. And uh, because there will be um, detractors like trying to imply that you weren't ever a Muslim. So... <laughs> You do the beat and shit. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, so, like, uh, can you do that, please? I don't know why I'm asking you, but yes, please. Sure. I can recite Fatiha the best that I know it. It's been a while, but I'm going to try my best. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim, Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Walad Dhaleen. I'm not going to say Ameen. Love that tune. <laughs> Love that tune. Except that Jesus is the only word oh, that's worth knowing. Oh, I have something else for the Muslims oh, who for are it. considering Christianity. Oh. Jesus loves you. Oh, short and to the point. It's like, yeah. All right, so I've got my own magic words, as it were, <laughs> except for they're just truth. And I thought I'm going to share them because, uh, like, all, like, we all accept this, at least, like, you know, at least JC and me, and that's all of us and, and these two guys. So uh, we believe in, this is the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. Finally, uh, like, let's not forget this bit. 
we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And can I get an Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Boom. Okay, so yeah, like, thank you very much for uh, like coming to our country. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing your testimony. That's really great. And um, yeah, please do um, uh, pray. Uh, like seriously for Zamil's family that would be great for any Muslims like we mustn't forget that we are like uh, required to pray ceaselessly so we may as well fill it with good stuff like and not just you know pray about stuff that we already prayed about yesterday so step out in faith and boldly proclaim but also gently like anyone who has questions come at them how you'd want to be approached if you were a little bit like fearful and you know like in love, with love, and always about the love because it encompasses the entirety of the law. The law it covers a multitude of sins, and it just feels nice. Like just give it a go. What's wrong with you people? So, like, click, like, subscribe, share, comment, pray, repent, uh, confess Christ as Lord, and uh, like, boom, and, like everything will be great. And uh, I'm gonna say like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, stop speaking soon. It's gonna happen. I reckon like three, two, uh, yeah. Okay, then right. That's the love. Bye bye. Boom!